to thank you all for the opportunity. We're actually getting it started with a little video. So that's us pretty much in a nutshell. Um, what we're going to do today is just kind of give you guys, kind of try and bring that all in for you. I know you guys couldn't hear, so we'll do our best to make up with the video what you can hear from the video. So basically what we do at the United Way is we help people. We do that by raising funds to fund quality agencies located here and without the region that the United Way of Greater St. Louis covers. And we do that with two main things. We campaign and we raise the money to those to those agencies and then we have like the video Matt touched on, we have volunteers that come together that make the decisions to allocate those funds and Don's mm -hmm. actually going to get to that a little bit later in the presentation. But first I want to start with our mission statement. And our mission statement reads that the United Way of Greater St. Louis unites people of different backgrounds and interests who work together to strengthen health and human services in Missouri and Illinois. There's three key factors that I want to point out to you guys in that. First, we're local. We're right here. There's, we have nine counties that we cover in Illinois in the greater St. Louis region. We strengthen health and human services, and we bring together people from across the region that make the decisions that impact where we live and where we work. So I'm going to start with, this is our service region. As you can see, there's nine counties in Illinois that we cover. Within that region, there's three regional offices in Illinois. We have the Southwest Illinois Division Office, which is located <coughs> in Wood River. We have the Tri-Cities Area Division, that's in Granite City, and that's Granite City, Madison, Venice, and Pontoon Beach area. And then we have the Illinois Division, which is um, St. Clair, Clinton, Monroe, and Randolph County, and that's in the Swansea. That's where that office is located. So we do our best to really regionalize so that we can do our best to um, reach out to the needs of the community and, and fill what the community is asking for. So how do we help people? We raise money. We fund the not-for-profits and we're building those strategic partnerships that help bring that all together so that we can do the best to impact the community and fulfill the community's needs. Um, here's what we did last year. This is, these are our numbers for the United Way of Greater St. Louis as a whole. 
So, and then I'm going to break it down to what the Southwest Illinois Division did, and that's the region that we're in right now. Last year, we raised $68 million during the 2010 campaign. That funded nearly 200 agencies. It's actually 177 agencies that reach the whole region of United Way of Greater St. Louis. There's actually 41 agencies that are funded out of the Southwest Illinois Division office. However, just because that agency isn't within our region doesn't mean that that 177 agencies doesn't, doesn't help fulfill the needs within this region. And like again, like we said, we rely on about 400 volunteers in total that kind of come together and sit on the boards and sit on the panels that help allocate and make the decisions that best meet the community's needs. We are one of the most efficient United Ways. We have um, one of the lowest overhead costs. We try and our numbers right now are about 90, it's a little bit more than 90 cents to every dollar go back to the community. The money that's raised here in this area stays here. We contribute to that $68 million, but the money that's raised within this region will all stay here and get allocated back to that region. And like the video said, that roughly estimates about to one in three people are helped in some way by an agency funded by the United Way. So now I'm going to break down how our boards work. We have our um, corporate board of directors, and that is, um, they come together, they set our strategic plans, and um, develop the policies and procedures and review our bylaws. They hire our president and our CEO. So they are the ones, the buck stops with them, they make our decisions, we're 100% volunteer driven, and that's something that we are very proud of to know that our volunteers um, are making the decisions. We're there to help them and to help do what we can to help better the community, but really the decisions lie on the volunteers. Um, also, we have four regional advisory boards. There's a regional office in Missouri. I didn't touch on that in the video because we're obviously in Illinois. So the Southwest Illinois Division has their own board, Tri-Cities area has their own board, and the Illinois region has their own board. They meet periodically, they set their own goals, they set their policies and procedures for each region. Um, board, there's also the Board Leadership Development Committee, and that's the committee that comes together that recruits members from within the community, and they <coughs> set the procedures, and like I said, they're the ones that recruit, um, foster the board relationships, and do what they think is best. And we feel that it, it's great to have those board members recruiting because they're the ones out in the community, they're the ones that know what's going on, and they can bring those volunteers in, people that they think would be the best fit to help do all of that. So with that being said, talk a little bit about our campaign. We're getting ready to start our campaign. Our kickoff will actually be for this Southwest Illinois Division. It'll be September 14th here at Julius. Very exciting. Our campaign chair this year is Dave Brash. He's the CEO at Alt Memorial. He compiles his campaign team. That campaign team gets together. They um, plan the events. They make the phone calls. They set the goal, and they Basically, they run the show. We're there to help them. They've made, they've set a goal. That'll be announced in August. And um, so they're very excited. Last year, the goal was set at $1,945,000. They exceeded that by reaching, or by raising $2,046,000. So they're very excited. They're very pumped. They think they can do that and better this year. Um, like I said, that goal will be announced in mid-August. Um, then back to kind of bring it all in, most of that money comes from our employee campaigns. We're not necessarily, we do small fundraisers, but we really rely on the community and rely on our volunteers to help us get in the door to different or businesses to help us run employee campaigns there. 67% of that goal last year was achieved by the cooperation of our employee campaigns. And some of our, our three biggest campaigns, just to name a few off, Olin Brass, Olin, um, and ConocoPhillips. So that's kind of just a really fast, really brief overview about what the United Way does, kind of sum it up quickly with the campaign. And then now I'm going to talk a little bit more about what we do once we raise that money and where does it go. Hi, thank you for having me. I appreciate you allowing me to speak, so I'm stepping this way. Okay, so in your package, I prepared a little handout and it's six major components to our allocations process. The first uh, process is the volunteer recruitment. We recruit volunteers who are genuinely concerned and care about their community, who are committed and want to see healthier communities. Those are the types of volunteers we're looking for. 
The volunteer serve as the eyes and ears of the more than 200 donors who invest in the community. They trust us to allocate the funds appropriately. The volunteers participate in a four-month process to ensure that funds are distributed fairly, objectively, and with great consideration for their best use. We typically have an orientation like in January. The next component is volunteer education. Volunteers learned about the importance of building a stronger community by investing in a system of quality agencies that help people in need. The training includes an overview of key issues in the nonprofit community, the allocations process, and the United Way's quality standards. The quality standard is the best practice tool designed by volunteers and experts to assist member agencies in short process in a manner conducive to providing consistent, effective, and needed care in the community. The quality standards are divided into four performance areas. They are programs, governance, finance, and administration. The next one is the on-site visits. At this time, all the volunteers will gather. <coughs> they will do an actual tour of the facility of the agency. And this is a chance for the agency to tell the volunteers their stories and what they're doing in the community and how vital their services are. Okay. Next is the debriefing process. That's when the volunteers come together collectively to decide and determine how much to allocate. Who, which, which, and that's the most difficult part. But we come together and we agree. Which agency is deserving of more? Because there's a need. There's more food. There's a big issue to say in utilities and rent and such. Okay, and next is the allocations process. Agencies typically request funding based on their particular needs and programs. Funding requests can be as basic as operating costs or just to design a program to, us, to address the needs in the community. And based on the knowledge of the game through the allocations process, the volunteers have to come to a consensus about how much money each agency <coughs> will receive. And then finally, it's the approval and distribution. Once all the allocations recommendations are compiled, they are vetted through a three-part approval process. Following the approval, funds are distributed the next year. We are looking to diversify our allocation process because we need people who are bankers, we need people who are strategic planners, we're in need of all of these things. And we can't do this without volunteers, so thank you for your time. Okay. I'm gonna to touch a little bit on our volunteers. Um, like Donna says, we need volunteers for um, allocations, but we also um, kind of have come together with our agencies and help provide volunteers for them. And I brought a little 211 brochure for all of you. I heard it today and I like it, so I'm going to use it. 211 is kind of the United Way's 911 for Health and Human Services. It's a one stop shop. You can call them if you're looking to volunteer, if you need help in any way. So it really embodies the, our helping people uh, message that we try and put out. Uh, they have a list of geez, more than the 177 agencies that are United Way funded agencies. They have a database that spans this nine counties that we're in in Illinois and then the whole state of Missouri at access to them where they can um, reach that database and do what they can to help someone. Right now they're taking a lot of calls for um, assistance with paying their electric bills, assistance with finding cooling centers. Night, uh, 211 was awesome after the tornadoes hit. Um, they really, the 211 office in St. Louis uh, when it came to the 211 number for the whole state of Missouri, so they took all those Joplin calls, not to mention the calls that we had over here in the Tri Cities area, they had a little bit of that damage with the Easter tornadoes. So 211 is there for that. Like I said, they also work with our volunteer center. So one of the things that our volunteer center prides itself in is providing volunteer opportunities for anyone of any age. They have opportunities available if you have a two year old, all the way up to, you know, you. Uh, whatever, you can come in and volunteer and they'll provide the opportunity. So they set up, you can call and say, hey, you know, I have my three kids who are looking for something to do, and they'll find an agency, or if they don't have a project that they're working on already, they can hook you up and put you in the right direction with someone that you can talk to to volunteer there. And like I said, also, um, if you need help with anything, they're a great resource to call. They, a lot of times people will call if they need a ramp built in front of their house. Their house isn't accessible to them anymore. So 211 is a great place to start. 211 typically works from a touch dial phone, but if you don't, there's an 800 number on the back, and you can use that on your cell phone. So it's definitely a great one-stop shop. If you're not really sure, if you have a problem and you're not really sure where to start, 211 is a great place to start, and they can put you in the right direction, put you in touch with our volunteer center, or put you in touch with the agency.
see if it's best suited to help fill your need. With that, also, um, the Volunteer Center is constantly working on putting projects together within our community and the greater St. Louis metropolitan community. There's a big um, day of service coming up September 11th. They're working on projects all over the metro. We used to put projects together for that. Um, I believe it's that whole weekend they're going to do stuff, and that week leading up to it, prior to it, will have things going on. So if you have a group that wants to volunteer again and you're not really sure where to start and you know that you want to help with children, then you can call 211. They'll help you link up with the Volunteer Center and they'll help put you in touch with a group that has volunteer opportunities to work with children. So it's a great resource. It's definitely, it's an easy number to remember, 211. If you ever need help, just um, call them and they can um, put you in the right direction. So that's pretty much United Way in a nutshell.